Hello everybody, welcome to today's exciting video. In today's video, we'll be constructing a brand new station in low Earth orbit to serve as the gateway for future Jupiter colonization missions. Oh, did I mention this is the pilot episode, as they would call it, in a TV series of my Jupiter colonization series. <laughs> Pretty cool. So this series is taking place in a ACSS planet pack, which is stands for Actually Complete Solar System. Uh, one of the things that ACSS brings is a day-night cycle, which you'll see in just a second. So this is the launch of our service module, which is just a service module. And here's the demonstration of our day-night cycle. Pretty cool, twilight, and then day. I love that. It's a pretty neat gimmick. Um, ACSS also adds um, around 250 additional celestial bodies. But I'm playing on a custom install installation of it, so it's just the normal planets plus Jupiter's moons because we're going there. Um, we just detached our boosters at around 16 kilometers and we're zooming into orbit with our habitation module. This module will be the home for our crew, and it's one of two. Right now we're launching the core modules of our station, and later we'll add in put in all of the add-ons, such as the living quarters and that sort of stuff. I spent um, 17 minutes talking, and so this 15-second uh, clip was sped up by um, 100 times, 10,000%. We've docked, and here we are with another habitation module launch. Nothing to say here about it. But I really like the atmospheric effects. It's just really cool seeing the colors change. Oh, one thing about ACSS is that it makes the loading times of like your um of the build editor so much longer. Usually it's instantaneous, but not in this case. Um our habitation module did not have enough fuel to dock with the station, and so I targeted the wrong thing there with the station. So here we are at the habitation module. Slightly strange, we docked the station to the habitation module instead of the habitation module to the station. And all of those docking ports just are a testament to how much stuff we're going to add on to this. Right now we're building the core modules, as I previously mentioned, um, docked in low Earth orbit. Here, are, here, here we are with our first launch in twilight. Twilight in the brownish colors. This rocket is our docking module, which is pretty cool. And also, this was my very first attempt. Don't worry, you can trust me on that. Honest. Oh. Oh yeah, I did put that in the video. Oops. Boom! Explosion! Don't worry, that was a simulation of the real thing. Now cutting back to the docking module, docking, docking of the docking module, pretty fun to say. Um, we're just docking, <laughs> nothing. And I am a terrible docker, that's why NASA hires professionals. Um, here we are with another launch of, um, what was this launch? Um, uh, oh yeah, the south arm. This will be connected to our all of our colony ships, which we'll build on this station. Pretty cool, it has a few solar panels, and with those nice cinematic shots, we dock pretty perfectly this time, and you're perfect. For my standards, <laughs> I'm a very bad docker. Archived footage, another simulation, and we took off, okay. Never mind, you don't need to know that. This is our solar module launch, or solar array launch. And no, the station is not symmetrical, which bothers me slightly, but it's not a big deal. It would just make it a lot bigger and more of a hassle if it was. We slammed into the station there, and oh, speaking of that, um, note to self. Hire professional dockers when I do it for real. Gotcha. We're just extending those solar panels, which look pretty cool, big, small, big, small. Solar panels are just for aesthetics right now, they don't have any purpose. So now we have the launch of our short and stubby Kerbal-esque rocket, which will bring the oxygen shipments to the station. As you can see, the tutorial just popped up there because I installed an update. 
In this series, I'll be playing with a custom set of rules, which I'll reveal more of as the series progresses. So one of those is that stations and things in orbit need oxygen. So here we are with the oxygen modules. Pretty self-explanatory. Oxygen tanks are silver. Um, just attaching the booster, and I use those landing legs to look like pipes, so they're like feeding into the station. We're raising our orbit here to a higher orbit, and now we have our water tank launches. This almost comically large or comically tall rocket is what's bringing our water tanks to orbit, and here we are. Water tanks are checkered. Oh, nice square pattern. And now we have water, oxygen, and we need food. So food will be produced in the hydroponics modules, which we are currently launching. The tutorial is pretty nice to follow along with because you can just get a perfect orbit. <laughs> and we're just docking those hydroponics domes to the station. Each dome can support two astronauts, and this station will hold eight. In my negligence, I um, ended up crashing the other one into the station <laughs> can't be good for the metal um, but anyways after docking to the wrong port it shows how bad of a docker i am um we have a half completed station i just skipped ahead i skipped the launch of the second hydroponics domes and we're just putting putting them into place right now Pretty standard docking, I was coming in pretty fast, but I luckily slowed down to prevent any damage to the docking ports. What do we need? We have food, oxygen, and water. Everything to support crew. Well, crew need living quarters. Here we are with the living quarter modules. Um, living quarters have to be drained fuel tanks, and there's a certain size I don't that they need to be. I don't have it right in front of me. I'll probably explain that in the set in the next video, if I remember. And um, living quarters also need a command pod on the side to symbolize capacity for one astronaut. So one command pod is one astronaut, basically, since there are no astronauts in the game. I apologize for the sort of slideshowy <laughs> frame rate that we have right here. Um, I think the station reaches reached the turning point on where it got so large that um, frame rate just drops <laughs> in presence around it. So with all of the resources needed to support a crew of eight, now we need the crew. Um, the crew will be launched in this crew arrow, which is my newest crew transport, which holds eight people. It has it makes use of part clipping to make it look better, I guess. So those landing legs and the RCS thrusters are clipped into the um, aerodynamic pieces. And oh no, we've got crashed into by a prototype of the crew arrow. Um, instant replay on that and a slow-mo replay. Oh, um, that was not planned, actually. <laughs> I was really surprised when that happened. It was just such a coincidence. What are the odds, right? Um, Okay, so that was a simulation. No lives were lost, but it just goes to show how durable the vehicle is. It kept flying. Um, here we are with the real launch of the crew arrow, and um, just a pretty standard ascent profile following the tutorial once again, although I don't need it. <laughs> and oh yeah, this um, is in real time right now. So. That is our real acceleration. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And oh, so you can see the solar panels extending in real time. And wow, we reached orbit with like 10 seconds of burning. <laughs> it has a really high TWR. Approaching the station, we do a pretty fast or pretty late um, suicide burn, I guess that's what they're called. And we are docking nearly perfectly for my standards. And with that perfect docking, it's time to conclude this video with this nice cinematic shot of the station fading into the background as the music swells. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching to the very end. And if you really enjoyed the video, please consider liking or subscribing or joining my Discord server. Goodbye!